Drill Sergeants, what's the funniest thing you couldn't laugh at? Story 1. Not a DI. When I went through basic, they gave everyone a flashlight with a lime green yellow thing on the bright end that you had to have with you in the morning for PT. Well, one individual forgot his when we all lined up in the morning and didn't say anything till we walked over to the PT pad. The TI began to berate him and tell him that he is a dumb butt and run back to the bunks to retrieve the flashlight. Before he leaves, the TI yells, If anybody stops you, just tell them you are a dumb butt. Well, a TI was across the street and saw him running back to the bunks and saw the trainee all by himself, so he starts laying into him. We could all hear him on the PT pad until the trainee got a chance to respond with, Sir, trainee so-and-so, report is ordered. I am a dumb butt. The TI walked away and didn't say anything. I have another story about this exact airman. Next to the end of basic training, depending on your TI, you might get what is called an amnesty hour. It's everyone who has been in basic with you and your TI basically talking to you like a normal person again. Well, our TI opened the floor for questions and the first kid to raise his hand was the kid who forgot his Lackland laser. During all of basic when I was there, a rumor was going around that a TI had posed for Playboy. Now, it was a rumor, but no one could go on a computer to Google it, cause it's BMT. The airman stood up and asked straight-faced, Sir, is it true a TI posed for Playboy? Our TI laughed and confirmed the rumor. Man, again, Sir, did you meet this TI? Our TI responds with, No, but if I did, I would be tapping that. Without missing a beat, this short, skinny kid from Tennessee says, Thank you for not hitting it so that the rest of us don't fall in it. I cried laughing. Lackland laser. I'm not entirely sure what half of that was about, but in general it sounds pretty funny. Though, bold of that TI to think he would ever have a chance with a Playboy model. Maybe he would, but calm down. Story 2. Not a drill sergeant, but went to Army Basic. I was in the chow line, nut to butt, looking at the back of the guy's head in front of me. All of a sudden, I can feel one of my drill sergeants breathing on me over the separation wall, and he yells, Shia LaBeouf, who is your daddy? To which I responded, You are, drill sergeant! My other drill sergeant sprints over and says, Oh yeah? What does that make me then? And all I thought to say was, My mommy, drill sergeant! Every drill sergeant in the chow hall was dying, and I got the dog crap smoked out of me outside. I have plenty more stories, either equally as funny or possibly even funnier. When I was in AIT to be a medic at Fort San, we had to toe the line for bed check, stand on a yellow line by your bunk in PTS slash shower shoes, holding your ID card with your tags hanging out. We used to frick with each other hard in our bay, and right before toe the line, one of my buddies hid one of my shower shoes. So I'm in a rush thinking, frick, 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 okay, I'll just wear the one. So I'm standing at half attention in one flip-flop and my bare foot is just kind of tucked away behind me. Our cadre of check comes up and just looks directly down at my feet, crosses his arms and says, Shia LaBeouf, what in the Sam Frick are you doing? All I could get out to say was, Sergeant, I cannot find my other shower shoe for bed check. And I think he'd been saving this one because he started to smirk and just yelled, God damn it, Shia LaBeouf, you are more ate up than a chocolate doing in a gay bar triggering giggles and snickers all throughout the bay. Thankfully, our school cadre were a lot more chill than drill sergeants. It's 2019, I can have two daddies, drill sergeant. Was never a DI, but I can pass along a classic boot camp story. I was in the Navy, and in the Navy, your final inspection as a division is before the division officer, which is usually some junior officer puke that got assigned that job, but we didn't know any better. Anyway, before the inspection, one of our RDCs, that's what we call the DI in the Navy, found a locker out of sorts, and that was not fun, let me tell you. Wool uniforms, if we lost our cover, we got beat more. It was bad. Decided to beat us in our dress blues. Anyway, the DO rolls in for inspection, walks up to the first dude in formation, and he pukes. However, this guy was a freaking genius. He puked down the t-shirt in his dress blues, saving the D.O. from getting puked on, and us from getting beat even more. The division officer was so impressed at this dude's military bearing that he called the inspection right then and there. 5.0 sailors all around. We still got beat that night, but that guy was a hero. Maybe it's just the way I'm reading these because I've got military speak on the mind, but the way a lot of this stuff is written makes it feel... Notably different than our usual stories. Interesting. I'll do my best not to gradually turn into Arlie Ermy. Story 3. 
So when you start basic, your body doesn't know how to handle no sugar, caffeine, rigorous exercise, and sleeping schedules, so it's in shock. With this shock, crapping becomes a problem for a few. Well, every DI after the first week is required to ask around if everyone has taken a crap, and from there, he assigns one recruit to track who has crap and who has not. I crap you not, pun intended, we had one guy who would stand in the barracks at the end of the night rolling off names of people who hadn't crapped yet. Finally, we have one guy who is still on there after two weeks and the DI tells him to go to the doctor. The doctor gives him a get out of jail free card, essentially saying that at any point he says the magic words, I got to crap, and he can escape any situation. Well, recruit can't crap, we'll call him, gets the smart idea that he's going to play his new trump card as long as possible. Every time that we're getting grilled, I gotta take a crap comes ringing in from the back of the formation. This probably happened six times until our DI caught on. Finally, our DI devises a plan that when recruit can't crap goes into the bathroom, he's gonna have a couple of us hold onto his legs and slide him into the stall all exorcist style. The time comes and recruit can't crap excuses himself. We all follow our DI into the bathroom and slide him under there like he's the spawn of Satan. This catches recruit can't crap by surprise. He doesn't know what the frick is going on as the DI is utterly berating him about lying and using this as an excuse to sit on the toilet. Then we hear a very audible, oh crap, from the stall. The DI scared the recruit so much he actually took a crap right then and there. The DI made every recruit look at it, and we played taps for it as we flushed it down the toilet. Holy frick. We played taps for it. I'm going to die laughing. Story 4. In Navy boot camp, they call forced PT beatings. Everyone knows what a beating is. Navy doesn't have drill instructors. They call them RDC, Recruit Division Commanders. One day, standing in ranks, the RDC is going around asking random trivia questions about a test we had to take to make sure we had been studying. He gets to a guy who was eccentric, to say the least. This is about a month and a half into boot camp. RDC asks the question, guys gets it wrong, so RDC yells, No, wrong! Beat yourself! Literally everyone knew this meant start doing push-ups, so the expectation is he will start doing push-ups as the RDC moves to the next guy to ask a question. He was standing across from the guy and he had a confused look on his face. He looked at his own hand for five seconds, then hauled off and slapped himself in the face. It made a loud crack sound, he got himself good. I cracked and chuckled, trying to keep composure at attention. The RDC looked to me, then realized why I laughed had to do with the slapping sound. He turned back to the self-slapping guy and asked him if he slapped himself. Guy says, you told me to beat myself. Cue the entire barracks cracking up. It was a single moment during boot camp where the curtain was raised and a moment of unadulterated levity came over everyone. The RDC couldn't stop laughing, so the tough guy butthole persona melted away for a good 60 seconds until he regained composure and made us all do push-ups. The push-ups were an easy price to pay for that moment. Those moments are so genuine. It was times like that that you felt human again. Take and busted out laughing, and then we all did push-ups for about 10 minutes. W. Frankly, I'm just glad this story explained beatings, so that previous story that kept talking about beatings makes a little more sense now. Military folks, no offense, but you are just awful about explaining your own jargon. Story 5. Early in boot in MCRDSD, we were post-shower and at attention for the hygiene inspection, wearing nothing but skivvies and t-shirts. The DI is walking the line, checking fingernails and whatnot, when one private's hard-on flops out of his skivvies right as the DI passes him. The DI stops, looks the private in the eye, and says, Private, I don't even like you, much less like you that way. Now put that goddamn thing away before it goes off. The private in question turns purple with embarrassment and tries to stuff his boner back in his skivvies, but is getting flustered as the DI starts yelling at him for being an incompetent private. And that if he didn't get it stowed in three seconds, the private would be taking a ten minute cold shower. Things like, do I have to hose you down like an excited chihuahua? Should I call the vet? Good God, private, is that how you greet your mother at night? Stow your gear, goddammit! Every other private in line was trying not to laugh, and the SDI had retreated to his office where we could hear him howling with laughter. The private finally gets his junk stowed, and the DI resumes inspection, and you could see he was trying his damnedest not to bust out laughing. No one got much sleep that night. There were too many gigglers in the bunks and too many quiet one-liners.
Can I just say, different men uh, stand at attention at different angles. Some stick up, some stick down, and some stick straight out. Trying to put it away with minimal fabric is like trying to set a spring-loaded trap without a latch. Story 6. While in basic, we had a female that loved to smile. She was just a happy person in general. Well, my TI training instructor came in and she caught the female trainee smiling. TI didn't like smiling. She walked up to the female trainee and yelled, wipe that smile off your face. Female trainee stopped smiling. The TI continued to yell, no, literally wipe the smile off your face with your hand. Trainee does so. Now throw it on the ground. Trainee follows orders. Now stomp on it and scream, die, smile, die, as loud as you can. The female trainee stood there for a second before following through. Her tiny little voice cracks and she yells, die, smile, die. And I will say it took everything I had not to bust out laughing. Had a guy in my Navy division, not really a big deal smiler, just his facial physiognomy. He looked like he was grinning. About the second phase of training, he made an effort to frown to stop the attention. At some point, the RDC asked him what he was smiling about. He responded with something like, Not smiling, petty officer, just ugly. Story 7. On day 2 of basic training at Lackland AFB, my flight was returning with our newly issued gear after having our heads shaved and other hurry-up-and-wait tasks. Our TI told us to go upstairs and stand at attention by our beds. We ran up there tired after attempting to march what felt like two miles each way in the August Texas heat. We were all standing there waiting for whatever is going to happen next. After about five minutes, Donnie Barnes says, That Sergeant Gates is a butthole, am I right? And you would not believe what happened. As soon as Barnes said Gates, the locker directly behind Barnes popped open with a creak. Barnes is frozen solid. Out of the locker pops one leg after another, and the three taps as Sergeant Gates walks out of the locker and puts his mouth directly next to Barnes's ear and shouts in his gravelly voice, ON YOUR FACE! We did so many push-ups. Holy frick, I think the sergeant was magical from that day forward. We couldn't say crap about him even when I'm at home. Mother Effer would crawl out of my closet on his tooths, I swear. Story 8. A story from my perspective as a recruit in Navy boot camp. We had an inspection the following day, so our chief was going around inspecting inside everyone's rack to make sure it was squared away. Eventually, he made it over to my section. He was checking the rack, bunk bed that opens up beside me, and had it propped open so he couldn't see his face and kind of forgot he was there. He's searching through this guy's stuff and sees his small gloves, and he asks, You know what they say about small gloves? Now, keep in mind, I don't think any of my RDCs heard me talk until this point, and I said without any hesitation, I know that's not true. I wear a size 12 boot, and I can tell you right now I don't have a size 12 dong. And my chief slammed the rack shut and looked at me. What the frick? He then stormed into the fishbowl, and all you could hear was him trying to hold back his laughter in the office with the two petty officers. Obligatory not to RDC, but... Kind of similar, about three weeks into training, my class was getting measured for our khakis with one of our RDCs supervising. Somehow the topic of shoe sizes came up and everyone in my class was size 10 or higher. Our chief piped up, I'm an 8.5. Small feet may or may not be indicative of other things. I was halfway expecting one of these officers to demand to see someone's wiener with the way these stories have been going. What do you mean you don't have a size 12 dong? Show me! Show me your special friend and be proud of that thing! I'll give it a little kiss since you hurt its feelings! This bit the Manly Facts guy is doing is getting a little weird! Bail out before it goes too far! Story 9. I was a super light sleeper during basic training. One night I woke up for no reason. The sleeping bay was dark except for the lights by the desk where the two soldiers on fire guard were supposed to be awake and alert. Both were leaning back in their chairs, dead asleep. I started to throw my covers off to go wake them up. If a drill sergeant came through and caught the fire guard sleeping, we'd all pay. But then I heard a slow scraping sound to my right off in the darkness. I froze and heard it again, closer. A few heartbeats later, I almost screamed out loud as I saw the sharp, intense face of our Samoan drill sergeant in the darkness. His face was covered in full camo. He was low crawling underneath the line of our bunk beds toward the fire guard. He had a bayonet in between his teeth. We locked eyes and he silently raised one finger to his mouth, signaling for silence. I nodded and sat back to watch the show as the drill sergeant resumed his low crawl under and past my bunk in the direction of the sleeping guards. 
I have a bunch of stories of funny crap I did to correct soldiers when I later became an NCO, but that image, like something straight out of an 80s war movie, will always stick with me. Mind telling us the ending? This shoot too good. Story 10. I have two. We had a recruit knight who just couldn't do anything right. He couldn't even put on cane paint. So we were out in the field and our DIs had him completely black his face with it. I'm talking his ears, inside his nose, even his lips. Then they made him walk around with another recruit whose name was also Knight, and happened to be black, and pointed him while saying, Recruit Knight is as black as Knight. I saw quite a few other DIs chuckle at that. Then on our last day before graduation, our three hats came in and told us we were our Kill Hat's first actual platoon as a DI, and he was going to wake us up on the morning of graduation. So he hatched the plan, and that morning, when the Kill Hat came out and screamed, Get Online, we all ran to the end of our tracks, but half of the squad bay was wearing togas and the other half was butt naked. He basically did a double. What exactly am I reading? Is this military jargon or is this just bad writing? Because I feel like I'm losing it. I understood about half of that and then there were killer hats waking people up naked or something. The military's weird. Story 11. Whenever our recruit would bust butt, we would make them turn on the vacuum cleaner, which meant we would yell, who the frick just crapped themselves? This recruit is attempting to attack our olfactory sense. Platoon, turn on the vacuum. Which would be followed by, turn on the vacuum, aye aye, sir. And then all the recruits would suck in through their mouth as hard as they could. However, one time we had a recruit who immediately answered when we asked who crapped themselves that, this recruit crapped himself, sir. Turns out recruit Jones crapped himself during a late night drill session in third phase. By then, recruits are disciplined and almost always put the mission first even if that mission is just executing left face march. Without asking to go to the head, poor kid sat in his own crap for almost two hours. Thank God I never peed myself. If someone farted, you would all suck it in. You know, there is stuff I hear about the military where I'm like, that seems really harsh, but I suppose that is part of military culture I'll never understand. Then there is stuff like this that just seems like a poorly disguised fetish someone is exploring thanks to the unquestionable power of rank. That is weird, and someone was getting off to it. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 12. We weren't allowed to talk during chow at the galley. You had to point at what you wanted another recruit to pass, and they had to silently pass it. One recruit wanted a napkin and pointed. The other recruit asked, this? The CC, Coast Guard's DS, immediately came over, circling him like sharks, screaming at him. They made him put, like, ten saltines in his mouth and chew until his mouth was full, then asked the first recruit if he wanted a napkin again. He barely could get it out, spitting pieces of cracker everywhere. Then they all screamed at the first recruit to answer him, but we were all silently cracking up. Sounded like this. Pieces of saltines flying out. Answer him! Cracking up, almost crying. No, thank you. It was the best. I've heard good things about Coastal Basic. Story 13. In my basic training class, I was a squad leader, which is essentially just a person who does extra chores. Anyways, for reasons unknown, myself and the other squad leaders were doing push-ups in the drill sergeant's office. Now, when you do these push-ups, you eventually reach muscle failure. You just sort of hang out there in the front, leaning rest, and try to bust out another push-up every few seconds or so. We're all in there dying, and the drill sergeant says to one of my buddies, Private Hudson, tell me what's the difference between basic training and being in prison? Without missing a beat, Private Hudson says, Drill sergeant, in prison they get to watch TV. The drill sergeant cracked a little bit of a smile and then told us to get up and get out of there. Nothing like some extreme physical workout to get your brain firing. Story 14. Not me, but I had a great team sergeant who had a floater, wonky eye, that he was blind in from an injury in Iraq. So when I was dead on and worked fine, but he had this one Uncle Ruckus eye that just did its own thing. He was a very physically imposing man with that classic drill sergeant bass voice, and his crazy eye just added to it, and he knew it. He told a story about his time as a drill sergeant when two privates had sat down on Firewatch and were kind of just being lackadaisical about their duties when he found them. 
So he starts just giving them the business, classic Full Metal Jacket style, and finally he just ending his rant right before he's about to smoke them for who knows how long, when one of the offending privates just says, Drill Sergeant, are you yelling at us or the water fountain? It stopped him dead in his rage and he just walked away mid-knife hand. That could have gone very, very badly. A risky move that paid off. Frankly, if someone is going to yell at me like that, I'm going to respond with snark and jokes. It's what I do in stressful situations, and I'm certain would have landed me in a lot of trouble had I joined the military. Story 15. I was going through Air Force basic training, and when on guard duty, if an unauthorized person wanted to be let into the bunks, you had to report it to your drill sergeant. Our sister flight's drill sergeant came up while I was on guard and requested entry, so I reported to my sergeant, and he had me ask the other a series of questions. The sergeant had a bushy mustache, so one question I had to ask was, in what year was Magnum P.I. cancelled? He dropped out of view from the window laughing, came back and yelled, it was never cancelled because I'm still here. It took everything I had not to crack up. Story 16. One recruit left his training guide just lying on his rack. My lead RDC decided this was punishable by making the recruit stand in the middle of our berthing, holding the training guide in his left hand, salute it with the right hand, and then bring it and gently whisper, I love you, training guide. I'm sorry I left you out. I'll never leave you lying around again. That crap was hilarious, especially because we were all put at attention while he did it for about 45 minutes. First five minutes would have been gold. After that, just boredom. Story 17. In the academy, one of the DIs had a recruit doing push-ups. He told the kid he was going to do push-ups for five minutes straight or something like that. As soon as the kid started, another DI approached the first DI and started arguing that the kid hadn't really frisked up that bad, and he really didn't deserve to be punished. After some back and forth, he agreed that the kid did indeed deserve to be punished. The first DI then said loudly that he had not checked his watch, so he would have to start the five minutes now. At that time, another DI approached and started asking for mercy on the recruit, who was by now basically just humping the ground sweetly. It went on like that for a good while. Good times. Story 18. Buddy of mine told a story when he was at basic. One guy had said yes ma'am to the female DS earlier in the day, so when they were all lined up, she was going down the line asking each person if they called her ma'am earlier. The guy who did was fourth in line, heard the three previous guys say, no drill sergeant, then said in all seriousness, no ma'am. I overheard a, yes petty officer, yes petty officer, yes petty officer, okie dokie. Petty officer had to make a quick about face and flee before he busted up laughing. It was fantastic. Frankly, if I were in charge of some soldiers, I would demand okie dokie as the standard response. Then I would probably tell them all to take an early day, go out, treat themselves, and later we could watch a movie. Then I would get fired. Uh, discharged? Whatever. Story 19. Had one recruit paying attention to a bunch of geese rather than us. Made him get up and chase them all away. As they flew in the air, we made him follow them for several hundred feet to make sure they wouldn't come back. I was dying of laughter on the inside. Didn't know recruits were permitted to participate in joining training exercises with Canadian Special Forces. Story 20. There was a dumb butt in my basic that after firing, he had his rifle up on his shoulder pointed the wrong way toward the DS clearing it with the mag still in. The DS, 6'8 bodybuilder, slammed the sucker into the sandbag, screaming at him, and then the recruit had to lay prone in the dirt while holding a stick for a rifle periodically saying, bang for the next three or four hours somehow he still graduated with us story 21 not a di but i enjoyed watching this happen on hikes my di loved having conversations using the recruits as messengers the di at the end of the formation would send a recruit to the front to give the di up there a message and back they would either have stupid conversations or talk trash using the recruit this was something my wrestling coaches did at wrestling camp to make us run more Eventually, they ditched the facade and just made the person in back sprint to the front every time a whistle blew. Story 22. Not a drill sergeant, but when I was in basic, I saw three drill sergeants surrounding a private who was laying down, and they were all screaming, Go the frick to sleep right now, private! You take a goddamn nap this very second, you poor tired soul! Not exact words, but you get the gist of it. I still wondered how he got himself into that predicament. Caught sleeping, can guarantee. Better than chanting, stay awake, stay alive for a couple hours. 
See, I would be yelling that at the private, but I would actually mean it. Maybe get him a nice hot cocoa and a blanket. We could snuggle up and read a book together. You know, the military sounds just lovely when I talk about it. Story 23. When getting to the depot, you get rid of all personal items aside from your wallet, phone book, glasses, and religious items. It was second phase and we were drilling on the parade deck. We finish and are marching back to the house when our DI catches someone smiling. He says, Oh, good, something funny, empty out your pockets. Recruit empties his pockets, contents. A pen, knowledge card, and lo and behold, he has a dollar bill. Our DI was dumbfounded and asked, Why the frick do you have money? You going to the titty bar after this? The recruit responded with, I heard we get to use the vending machine if we do well. Story 24. When I was in boot camp, our drill instructor had a recruit sit in front of his own reflection, stainless steel panel, and continually ask himself if he really wanted to be here for three freaking hours, all while screaming at him to mean it and I don't believe you. I don't know how they didn't crack up was hilarious. One of my green belts had a recruit stand in the head in front of the mirror and point to his reflection and say, I'm not crazy, then point to himself and say, you're crazy. It went on for 45 minutes or so until our senior came in and put a stop to it. Always happy to hear when the military just full-on resorts to brainwashing and mental torture. I mean, nope, you know what? That's a can of worms I am not about to open. Never mind, moving on. Story 25. During FTX, the DS told me to get a trash bag, then go around and collect as many pine cones as I could, for like three hours. Had a bunch of trash bags, he then took a little walk around, contemplated for a bit, then said that he was mistaken, and it looks better with pine cones. He ordered me to redistribute all the pine cones. One guy had a leaf on his rock after a FT and got the company smoke for stealing private property from federal lands. Everyone was laughing a bit and even the DS. Story 26. Had two guys laugh when RDC walked in, so he had them stand almost noses touching each other. One would yell, want to hear a joke, and the other would yell, ha ha ha, repeatedly for hours. It was hilarious at first, but once their voices started to crackle, it got old pretty quick. Dang, that is pretty funny. Is it? I guess comedy is subjective, but sure. Story 27. Story from my wife when she was in BCT. They are eating chow one day early on, maybe first or second day out of reception, and they hear a drill instructor yelling, Why the frick are you eating salad with a spoon? Apparently in reception they have been told not to bother with forks since they had five minutes to eat their meals. Dude wanted a salad. He decided, frick it, I'm eating salad with a spoon. Hilarity ensued. Drill instructors let everyone know that not using forks is a dumb freaking rule and whoever told them that is freaking stupid. Story 28. We had a TI and TI in training with us as we were marching to class. Some people were out of step, so the TI started screaming, Don't you know your right from your left? Did the antenna fall off your house when you were a kid? Didn't your mommy and daddy let you watch 321 Contact? The TI in training lost it. So did I. My flight's training TI was a spitting image of Eddie Murphy. Imagine Eddie Murphy teaching you how to about face. Story 29, not a DS, but in basic, 2005, we had a recycle come through with the last name Foo. DS got a kick out of asking him to spell his name whenever they wanted to frick with us. DS, spell your name, Private Foo. Poor, sad, hated soul. Drill Sergeant, F-U, Drill Sergeant. DS commences destruction. Story 30. I worked at basic training ranges and we had a drill sergeant yell at his soldier while they were getting ready to go down a buddy live fire exercise. The soldier froze and started crying. This 18-year-old kid was just in tears for getting yelled at. The DS yelled at him some more and he finally gave up because this kid wouldn't stop crying. So he made him scoop tears off his face and put them in his pockets till he filled his pockets up with tears. He did this for like an hour. It was hilarious. <laughs> I would laugh at that drill sergeant's face if he demanded that of me. No joke. And yeah, I'm sure someone in the comments wants to come in and say, Uh, yeah, no you wouldn't. You have no idea how... <laughs> yeah, well you have no idea just how insubordinate I can be, you dumb commenter. Go lick a boot. <laughs> I'm in a mood today. Story 31. We had two five foot one stocky blonde guys named Johnson in our company one cycle. Different platoons, no relation at all, but they looked really similar. One day during grass week, a couple J hats made them face each other and go back and forth screaming, You're not Johnson, I'm Johnson. No, frick you, you're not Johnson, I'm Johnson. 
You have absolutely no clue how hard it was not to break into a million pieces after about five minutes of that. I'm Dirty Dan, Boot Camp Edition. Magikarp, use Splash Attack! Hit him with a Splash Attack, Magikarp! Quick, Magikarp, counter with a Splash Attack! Little reference to a new ground classic for, like, five of you watching this. Story 32. Standing information at Fort Knox about to head to the range and everyone needs their gloves. One private comes out without them, and the DS screams, Private, where the frick are your gloves? In this thick Tennessee accent, he goes, Well, dang, Drill Sergeant, I must have done left them some bees upstairs. The DS from New Jersey just dies laughing. I'm sorry that accent, I can imagine it so well, just freaking does it. Story 32. My dad, who was an RDC, shrugs and says, Oh, I laughed. Your hat is called your cover. It's the first day. I wanted some recruits from the back to the front to carry stuff. Get up here with your covers. They went and grabbed their sheets. Story 34. Drill instructor made a recruit stand in front of a tree pointing saying, I'm not funny, you are. When he was caught laughing. The DI did laugh at that one. I feel like I'd be laughing even if I was the one talking to the tree. Story 35. We had this kid who kept peeing himself. One day at the range, he informs our DI that he had crapped himself right after showers. Squad Bay starts to hold back laughter. DI. It's not funny! Awkward silence. D.I. Okay, it's a little funny, but we aren't laughing. Man never cracked a smile during the whole thing. Story 36. During Air Force BMT, my flight was practicing marching one afternoon. As our flight was still new, our marching was terrible. One of the assistant T.I.s reamed us all out and then proceeded to awkwardly mock us by marching and walking like jar banks while giving a spot-on impression. I'll never forget it. He just wanted an excuse to do the impression. I feel like that's supposed to read Jar Jar Binks, but I'm just gonna go ahead and think that there's a character named Jar Banks that did a really funny walk. Maybe that's the name of the guy in the Ministry of Silly Walks sketch. Let's just say it is. Story 37. An RDC in another division asked a guy if he was shaving that morning, and the guy claimed he had. The RDC said, Recruit, you are either a werewolf or you are lying, so which is it? The guy responded, I must be a werewolf, petty officer. Story 38. What's that disgusting crap all over your glasses, maggot? I believe it's your saliva, Drill Sergeant, sir. Close his eyes and waits for death. Oh, he did. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.